In this app, we're going to display two views side by side, just like Apple's Mail and Notes app. In Swift UI, this is done by placing two views into a navigation split view, then using a navigation link in the primary view to control what's visible in the secondary view. So we're gonna start off our project by building the primary view for our app. We'll just show a list of all ski resorts along with which country they're from and also how many ski runs it has, how many pieces you can ski down, sometimes called trails or just slopes. Now I provided some assets for this project and the GitHub repository for this book. So if you haven't already downloaded them, please do so now, github.com slash two straws slash hacking with Swift. You wanna grab this resorts.json file and drag that into your project navigator, like so. Make sure it's uh, as targets and copy items like that, then press finish. And now in your asset catalog, you're gonna go and grab all these images here. Just again, just command A, select them all and drag them all in to the asset catalog like that. Now you'll notice straight away, I've added uh, 2X and 3X pictures for the flags. So, uh, you know, Austria, Canada, whatever, uh, but only 2X pictures for the uh, resorts. Like this picture here, for example, uh, this is a, yeah, useless, come on, bigger. Useless, come on, show me a big version of that picture. There we go. That thing there, that's only 2X. Um, that's intentional. You know, these, these flags will be shown uh, at the right size for their resolution. So we have Retina 2X devices and Super Retina 3X devices and so forth. Um, but these resort pictures are designed to be shown big enough to fill all the space on an iPad Pro they're more than big enough for an iPhone, even a 3X iPhone, when they're shown on there, even though it's only a 2X image, it's perfectly fine. Now, to get our list up and running quickly, we're gonna find a simple resort struct that can be loaded from our JSON. That may make it conform to codable, uh, but to make it work better in Swift UI, we'll also make it use hashable and identifiable too. The data itself is mostly just strings and integers. If you look in resorts or JSON, you'll see what I mean. There's big old string here, bunch of numbers here, and some more strings in an array. Uh, this is the exception, this, this strings array here is the interesting bit. Uh, this is facilities that describe what else there is on the resort. Um, I should say this state is almost entirely fictional. Don't try and use this in a, in a real app. Anyway, let's make a new uh, Swift file with a resort inside now. I'll make a Swift file here. I'll call it resort.swift. And we'll say that our resorts are codable and hashable and identifiable like that. Now inside here, we have a bunch of properties. I'll say we have an ID string, a name string, country string, a description string. What else do we have? Uh, image credit, prize, size, snow depth. Right, so we have image credit, string, price int, size int, snow depth int, then uh, elevation runs and facilities. So elevation int, runs int, and then facilities is an array of strings, like that. So that's the data we wanna load from our JSON here. Uh, as usual, it's a good idea to have some example value in here in the model so it's easier to show working data in your designs and your previews. Uh, this time though, there are quite a few fields to fill out. And I think it's helpful if they actually had some real data inside. So I don't wanna try and make, make a resort by hand. Instead, we're gonna load an array of resorts from JSON stored in our app bundle which means you can reuse the same code we wrote for project eight previously, the bundle decodable extension. If you still have that, you can drop it in here and use it straight away. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll walk you through it anyway so you can see it in case you missed that video or whatever, right? To do that, you'll make a new file. Uh, so file's fine, make it bundle decodable. And this thing is an extension on the foundation bundle class with a new decode method that takes some kind of decodable type like this. Give me a file name from our bundle and return the type of the thing. 
And we're saying here, guardlet uh, iurl is self.url for resource, our file, with extension, nil. If that fails, straight away, fatal error, we failed to locate this file in the bundle. So crash the app immediately, but that's okay. This is a file in your app bundle. If it isn't there, or can't be loaded or can't be decoded, you've screwed up majorly. Don't try and recover from this in your app. Then once we have the URL to it, we'll load the data. God let data is try question mark data contents of that URL. Failing that again, fatal error. Failed to load the file from bundle. If we're still here, we'll make a decoder as a new JSON decoder object, and then attempt to uh, work through our data here. Now, what we'll say this time is we'll do a little do block, and we can catch various possibilities here. We could say, uh, first up, let's try and do our decoding. Uh, let's say uh, we'll return try our decoder dot decode t dot self from our data. Now, as a reminder, what we're saying here is attempt to decode some type, some type from here. We don't know what it is. We just know it's some kind of type that is a T. And that T thing, that is the thing that says this is going to be an unknown decodable value here uh, provided by whoever's calling us, by whoever has said, yes, decode this thing. T could be a string, uh, an array of strings, an integer, a Boolean, or a resort struct instance, because that conforms to the decodable protocol. So saying attempt to decode whatever we were asked to decode, whatever that happens to be here, that's the thing we want to decode at this point. From the data we got, that's, that's the goal here. Now, Obviously, we want to try and catch these errors somehow. We want to try and think about how we want to try and catch these. And there's a bunch of ways you can catch this because all sorts of things could have gone wrong. All sorts of errors could have happened here that uh, maybe the, the, the JSON was bad, for example, or maybe uh, you have asked for an array of strings. You actually got an array of integers. There are a bunch of ways it can go wrong. It's a good idea to try and catch these carefully and see what's happening. And so we'll do that here. We'll say, try and decode this thing, but then let's try and catch individual errors. What might have gone wrong here? So we'll say the first thing that might have gone wrong is we've got a decoding error, which is key not found. And it'll tell us the key that wasn't found and the context it wasn't found in. And we can use that to print out meaningful error messages. So a key wasn't found. For example, we asked to find the description or a number of runs or whatever. It wasn't in the JSON. It wasn't found. Bang, that's a problem here. So we'll say in this situation, we'll trigger a fatal error saying failed to decode this file from our bundle due to missing key, which is that key name like that. And now we can simply print out the uh, context dot descriptional, uh, like this, it'll, our debug descriptional. It'll print out extra information out of the context saying, here's what we think went wrong. So that'll happen when we, we look for a particular key name, it wasn't found. Then we'll have another one here, we'll catch uh, a decoding error dot type mismatch. Uh, the type I don't care about, we ignore that, but the context does matter. So I'll just do uh, let context here. This is when you say decode uh, runs as an integer, but it's actually found as a string. So it does exist, but it's not the way you thought it would exist. So we'll say this time, uh, fatal error, failed to decode the file from our bundle due to type mismatch. And then print out the context.debug description. Next up, we'll say catch uh, decoding error dot value not found. So it's saying here, uh, literally in the help file here, we expect to have a value, 
but we actually got back nil. Nothing was found inside there. Null was inside that value. So value not found. Um, we can get rid of the type if you want to. Uh, let's do the type here and we'll do a context as well. If that happens, we'll say fatal error, uh, fail to decode our file from the bundle due to missing uh, type value. And again, let's print out the context debug description to see what's going wrong. Uh, there's one more option here, which is catching uh, decoding error dot data corrupted when the the JSON literally isn't valid. Uh, we don't care what this is in terms of context. It's just bad JSON. So I'll just do fatal error, uh, fail to decode file from bundle because oops, because it appears to be invalid JSON. Now I've got to add one more catch here, which is the Pokemon catch named after that because you've got to, you've got to catch them all. Uh, you've got to catch all possible errors. So we'll say there's a fatal error here, which is failed to decode the file from the bundle because of some error localized description. So anything else get printed out there. And so we're basically breaking down all the possible ways this decoding can go wrong. And then, uh, printing out meaningful messages along the way. So if you give me made a typo, you're in here, if you've typed something wrongly in here or typed something wrongly in here, it'll tell you exactly what was wrong so you can correct it more easily. Anyway, with that in place, we can now add uh, some properties to our resort struct here to store our example data. And there are two options here. The first is to load two static properties, one to load all the resorts in the array and one to store the first item in that array like this, we could say uh, we have uh, static let all resorts is an array of resort equal to bundle dot main dot decode resorts dot JSON like that. And then static let example is example is all resorts zero. The second option is to, is to collapse all that down to a single line of code. Uh, this requires a little bit of uh, gentle typecasting because the code extension needs to know what type of data it's decoding. So we could say uh, static let example is, and then in there in parentheses, bundle.main.decode resorts.json as a resort array and then read back the zeroth item like that. Um, you can do that. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I prefer the former option, which is that, because it's simpler and has a little more use in the future. If you want to show random examples rather than the same one again and again and again, they're all loaded now. Now, in case you were curious, when we use static let here, to make these constants, uh, Swift will automatically make them lazy for us. They won't get created until they're actually used. And this means when we try to read resort.example, then Swift will be forced to read ex uh, resort.all resorts. And it'll do that first and pass the value back to resort.example, which will pass it back to whichever you use the example. Uh, this means we can always be sure the two properties we run in the correct order. There's no chance of example going missing because all resorts wasn't uh, called yet. So now our simple resort struct is done. We can use that same bundle extension to add a property in content view that loads all our resorts into a single array. So over in content view here, I'm going to say let resorts is an array of resort equal to bundle dot main dot decode resorts dot json like that now for the body of our view here we're going to use a navigation split view with a list view inside of it showing all our resorts and in each row we're going to show a small flag of which country the resort is in the name of the resort and also how many runs it has now the size we're choosing is 40 by 25 which is smaller than our flag image source and also different aspect ratio. But we can fix that using the resizable modifier 
plus scale to, scale to fill, and a custom frame. To make it look a little bit better on the screen, we'll add a little, a little uh, custom clip shape and a stroked overlay. When the row is tapped, we'll push to a detail of you showing more information about the resort. We haven't built that yet, so instead we can just have a placeholder for the time being, okay? So, replace the current body property with a navigation split view. In fact, there's a list of our resorts, one resort handed to us. And now I'll make a navigation link with a value of that resort. In there will be a H stack. And we'll say, do an image with the resort's country inside. Make it resizable so it looks nice on the screen, nice and big. Make it scale to fill. Then add a fixed frame here. We'll say, uh, as a frame, width of 40, height of 25 and a clip shape of direct corner radius five. We'll then add a gentle overlay here, overlay here uh, of let's say direct with a corner radius, corner radius of five. And then we'll stroke that in uh, black with a line width of one, uh, so it looks pretty good on the screen. Uh, that's slightly wrong, sorry, it should be rounded rectangle, like that, that should be happier. Yep, there we go. Uh, and that's the country name in place. We'll add a little uh, V stack next to that. We'll say there is a uh, V stack here with alignment of dot leading with the resort's name. Like so, I'll use a little font of headline for this, the bigger, and then a text of the resort dot runs, runs like that. Let's add a uh, foreground style of secondary, because it's not quite so important. Like so. Then on our list, which is ending down here, we'll add a nav title of resorts, and then on the nav split view, which is the one outside that, is one here. In our detail view, I'll say we have the text saying detail. There we go. Command R, go ahead and run the app. You should see it looks pretty good. Uh, do try it in portrait and landscape. So I'm in landscape now in a Pro Max. You can see it's got a uh, split view happening here with a sidebar thing. Again, the Pro Max has that regular size class in landscape mode. Um, you can see how it looks. Again, try it in portrait, landscape, iPhone, iPad, get a feel for how it looks. Or oh, a slightly simulated glitch there. Uh, it fixes itself by itself. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, it's a good start. Now let's try and fill in the detail view.